Hey guys, what's going on? My name is Daniel Frost, and today I want to talk to you guys about Call of Duty Advanced Warfare and the new mode, Exo Survival. This is something that we were kind of expecting in terms of actually getting a survival co-op game mode, but we didn't know what way and how it would go. And obviously at first people are kind of depressed because they look at it and they see that it is a survival game mode similar to the Modern Warfare 3 survival mode. Um, I'm going to go through a lot of the stuff that IGN talked about. They wrote a really good article on it. Um, it shows a couple players experience who had hand-on experience with this. They got to sit down and they played it for a couple, you know, I think an hour or so. Um, there's a lot of information really to talk about and kind of all of this is on expectation. A lot of us are hyped up for zombies in a sense because that's somewhat in a way that we were led to believe off of some other clues and things like that but that's the thing with speculation and that's what i always try to do with my videos is tell you that hey you know even though this is the information that's coming out right now it might not necessarily be correct so don't get your hopes up too high in case something like this does happen but at the same time you need to think okay if it is going to be a survival game mode like mw3 um you need to be very careful because you can judge it rather harshly right away before you get it we're still 43 some days away before we get actually get the game and I said before you know I was a little bit discouraged looking at it at the first wave because I go all right It's gonna be an mw3 survival game, but it's gonna be very similar And you know, I'm not necessarily interested in it as much as I would be zombies So you have to take this in a sense like with a grain of salt You have to wait until you see it or you wait until you get some hands-on with it Same thing with any game with any Call of Duty game when you sit down with it and you play it for a week or a month or two months at least you can know right then and there all right is this game gonna have life potential is it gonna be good is it gonna be long term you know is it is it something that you're gonna be playing a lot and you're not really gonna know until you get to sit down with it and play hands-on so with that being said let's actually talk about exo survival it is a four-player mode uh, it's a two-player split-screen capable capable game as far as things go if you want to play with a buddy or something like that you can do that um, the basic concept of this is basically survival so you're put into a situation where you have all of these things being launched at you. You have normal people, you have bots, you have Goliaths, you have drones, you have every single thing. Uh, other enemies with exosuits bouncing around all over the place that are going to be attacking you within these rounds. So it is a round survival based game mode. Um, the other as aspect to this is you do have three different custom classes that you can choose from. Uh, they're called Light, Heavy, and Specialist. Now, they didn't go into br like really graphic detail with explaining this. They basically said uh, Light is a faster loadout with less firepower compared to Heavy, which is slower mobility. Um, my guess is something it's going to have a shotgun or something like a light machine gun, uh, more so probably like an XMG, uh, something along those lines. But he did specify that it was really slow to move around with. Uh, there is the specialist class, which is kind of a middle ground class is the way he described it, and it does have a longer range weapon. So that could be something like an assault rifle uh, that allows you to just be somewhat you know, usable instead of having like a submachine gun or something up close. Uh, there's going to be some variation there. So if you're playing with a group of four people, it's probably a good thing to honestly plan ahead and get you know multiple classes in there. You could have two heavies, you could have two lightweights, something like that, and then get some in between ground. You never know what you're going to need in terms of playing strategy. So that could go into it later on. We don't know yet, but this is basically how it's structured. You have those classes, and then on top of that, you're going to be earning points throughout the rounds, getting upgrades. Now, as far as we know with upgrades, the things that you can upgrade are your weapons. You go to a weapon uh, upgrade station, an armory station is what it's supposedly called, and then the exo upgrades. Uh, you can see these icons on the actual map itself. So you know that they're going to be there. They're talking about how this works. You can upgrade your exosuit, probably get extended boost, extended abilities, things like that that just may basically make you more powerful. Uh, the next thing is how the game actually works and what you're going to be playing on. It's going to be using the larger maps within the game is how it's supposedly kind of thought out to work. And you're going to be unlocking these by playing more. The more you play, the more rounds you complete, the more maps you complete. And it's in tiers. So basically you have to complete 35 rounds to access tier 2, 75 rounds to access tier 3, and 100 rounds to access tier 4. So what does that basically mean? You're increasing difficulty, you're increasing the maps, you're probably changing maps, moving around, unlocking different ways to play this game as you progress. Now, there are some things in here that are kind of unique and somewhat interesting. They could be somewhat frustrating, but uh, it basically has a point system and then there are, um, after 10 rounds, like if you looked at the survival round, you would used to have like a boss round in MW3. Well, it's gonna be a little bit different. You get these random rounds, but they're gonna be more focused on an objective type gameplay. And they described a couple of these as you have to go around collecting intel off of dead bodies or something like that within a limited amount of time. So if you complete that, you get certain upgrade points, you get more points for whatever you wanna spend on your exo or your actual gun itself. And then you can also get punished for this if you don't complete these actual objectives. So 
there is a very strong drive to make this competitive and make you want to do it. Uh, the failing part of this, if you fail and you get punished, you can suffer something like a system hack where it makes your screen blurry. Uh, you get short periods of time. You know, you just kind of have to fresh like fight through that during a big horde or something like that. Um, you're stuck out. You're stuck with X amount of weapons or you know sentry guns kind of get placed down on the map that actually shoot at you. So there are going to be things in this game that will affect you negatively if you don't complete those actual objectives. Uh, that's somewhat creative, somewhat clever. Uh, it's different than what you saw in the past in other survival modes, but uh, overall I still feel that this is going to be really touchy. You're going to need to sit down and you're going to need to play it. You're going to need to try it. Uh, it depends on how the AI plays. If the AI is really aggressive and they're actually kind of cute and clever, uh, then it could be pretty challenging. But at the same time, I'm on the fence because, you know, I was really hoping it would be some type of zombie game mode or something like that, but uh, I want to remind you that we are very early in the reveal of this game. If you look back, we didn't even know about certain game modes and co-op modes until like a re week before release, something around there, and this is, you know, 42 days. It's about a month and a half, you know, before we get the actual game. So there are a lot of things that can change, a lot of things that they can improve on, they can add on. They probably have a lot more up their sleeve over a sledgehammer. So. I wouldn't judge too harshly right away until we actually get the gameplay, until we get the footage of it, and you can sit down and you can watch this, you can play it yourself, and kind of figure it out if you like it or not. So that's where I'm leaving it. I'm kind of skeptical, a little bit let down, but we'll have to wait and see. That's just how this goes. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you've missed any of my Call of Duty Advanced Warfare content, please go ahead and click the playlist in the description. As always, guys, I appreciate it. If you like this video, it helps grow my Advanced Warfare audience in the future and allows me to bring you guys more content more frequently. So I would appreciate that as always, guys. I hope you enjoyed this. Take care.